we're going to do a demo of OmniPeak. Uh, a lot of the focus is going to be on 802.11 AC and, and capturing that traffic. Uh, I'll describe a simple setup that we have in the room for doing that. Um, I'm not sure how far everybody got in installing OmniPeak and if they're going to be able to, to generate any traffic and or make any measurements, but if not, we can play with that a little bit at the end. All right, so 802.11 AC. Um, First, let me describe the, the setup we have in the room for doing this because you know, there's not a lot of 802.11 AC out there today yet. We're certainly not using it in the room. Um, we, we certainly didn't, didn't demonstrate to you a very um, high-speed uh, wireless network for you all to get on, so uh, obviously not AC. Um, but what I have in the, in the room is a pretty simple setup. There's a laptop sitting up on that uh, credenza over there, and we're using that to ping um, a Linksys low end commercially available 11 AC access point which is just in the back corner of the credenza so they're pretty close together um, and that's basically all of the AC that we have set up here so uh, just some pings going back and forth and then on the capture end you know we have OmniPeak uh, running on a uh, just a typical Windows PC laptop ThinkPad and a little uh, USB wireless device the Linksys uh, Cisco Linksys AE6000 uh, which is which we're using to do the packet capture uh, it's Raylink based. Uh, it is single stream today. Um, we do know there are some two stream devices out there in the marketplace. Uh, those two stream devices are not based on Raylink chipsets. They're based on either Broadcom or Realtek today, uh, which are chipsets that we don't have a driver for for OmniPeak. We do for Raylink. Um, you know, Raylink has announced in the press uh, back in June that they're sampling uh, two stream USB chipsets right now and expect to have hardware out in the market uh, toward the end of the year. So we should have a two stream uh, adapter uh, that we'll be able to support with OmniBeak toward the end of the year. Um, so we'll be looking at for that uh, and, and very anxious to receive that and to, to start to capture with that. But for now, uh, single stream and everything that's up there is single stream. We have uh, the access points uh, fixed to AC and fixed to single stream. So um, what else was I going to tell you about the setup? Well, for later in the setup, there's also you know a gaggle of other devices back here. I have a USB hub with three different uh, 11 and well two different 11 and adapters and an air PCAP and some other associated 11 and devices on the back that we'll use for uh, showing multi-channel analysis and some other things a little bit later. Uh, so. One of the first ways to see what we're doing with uh, 802.11 AC is in the, the Compass dashboard, which I mentioned earlier. So uh, I think we had Compass uh, last year uh, when you guys were here, but we've certainly made some enhancements. Uh, first of all, one of the key things, new things being uh, we've added a, a channels view with inside Compass. We've also added a wireless LAN view. We've added some, um, some uh, measurement capabilities up on top. But it's certainly in the channels view where you can see we're capturing some A traffic, uh, you know, and that's mostly the management. It's a whole lot more, right? We're not pinging all that rapidly. Uh, and then we're capturing the AC traffic, uh, our ping packets, um, and, uh, you know, there we go. So if we want to see more about that, uh, if we want to see how much of the traffic out here, let's maybe look at data rates. So we can go up in Compass uh, and say, you know, we, you know, we don't want to be looking at, at megabits. not so important to us. But let's verify those data rates on this 11 AC traffic. So we go up and we verify the data rates, and we'll take it off average and put it on max. Um, and we can see that, yet, yeah, yay early, our pings are going at 433 megabits per second, uh, you know, straight across the board. So uh, Compass is already giving us some, some uh, very good information there. Um, you know, if we want to see other things in Compass, so we can come back to some of these later. Uh, I'll do them with, a, with different files that are a little more interesting or different captures. But you can see we can do bits and bytes, and we can do uh, signal strength. Uh, maybe that uh, would be interesting right now. So we can do signal strength. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just come into here. Total doesn't always matter, but let's see the signal strength from AC. So we'll come and we'll click uh, on just the AC channels, and we can see our signal strength. And yeah, it's you know up around 100 percent. That we'd kind of expect that. I'm only about 10 feet away. Um, so you know other things that we can see here in Compass. Uh, you know, the data rate we're looking at, that retransmission rates, etc. So uh, Compass is able to show us a fair bit about you know what's going on before we even dig in. Um, if we want to see a little bit more about these uh, ping packets themselves, uh, I am running a second capture. It's one of the other things that's nice about OmniPeak. You can start multiple captures on the same adapters. So I'm running two captures simultaneously. You can see this one is uh, progressing, but I'm filtering on just the ICMP traffic so that we can see just those packets. Um, you know, if we want to dig in and see, you know, what is that looking like for us? Let's go uh, to one of these 
it's not a CRC. Um, we can go in and look into the packet itself. Um, and we're seeing our AO211 flags, right? Uh, 80 megahertz and aggregated short GI. We're seeing it's at 433.3. Um, you know, it's AC traffic. It's at 80 megahertz. Um, you know, basically all the things that we would expect to see in the, in the decode. Um, some of the other things that in the packets view that I did want to mention uh, as well while we were in there is we have added some, uh, some columns also inside of, of OmniPeak, uh, which should make analysis at these kind of data rates much easier for everybody. We did add support for and added a column for the MCS value. So now in OmniPeak, we're actually uh, keying off the MCS value. We're getting that uh, passed up to us from the driver, along with other information about the number of streams and the bandwidth that's being used, et cetera. And then from there, we're able to, to go back and, and you know, quantify exactly what the data rate is uh, for those particular packets. So you see again, we're at the 433. We've got our MCS values. Uh, we also now list the number of spatial streams uh, that are being used. Uh, this is all one spatial stream right now. As I mentioned, the adapter itself uh, is only one spatial stream. And that's the same adapter is being used to send the traffic, is to capture the traffic. So uh, we expect everything to be in a single spatial stream. Uh, so all things that we've added in Omnipeak to, uh, to make the analysis of 802.11ac data uh, much easier. If we uh, come back here, we'll go back to packets. Um, if we wanted to look into more um, on the beacon side, if we wanted to see what that looks like, you know, we have the AC beacons here. Um, you know, not too much interesting at the top, but as we, you know, get down toward the, the very high throughput um, areas. Phone is going. So there we are in the very high throughput areas. Um, you know, we can see the, you know, what, what's supported in terms of 802.11ac, whether more than that short GI is supported for, you know, the, the much larger bandwidth, which it is not, but it's supported for 80 megahertz. Um, you know, basically, you know, after a, a bit of work and, you know, some bug fixes, we, we have some, you know, very good decodes here on the 802.11ac side. So, you know, as we're going through, if there's things that you guys want to uh, want to see or want me to pause on, let me know um, from, from an AC perspective. Um, but, you know, that was most of the traffic that we had uh, um, that we're generating, unless anybody starts to generate any AC. And I guess the only way to do that is really to ping the box because the box isn't on the Internet, so we're not going to generate, you know, HTTP or anything like that. But uh, we could certainly generate some more traffic if we wanted to try to do that. Um, so you know, that's kind of you know, but, but for us the the state of the art with AC, um, you know, able to capture it, able to decode it, um, you know, single stream today, two, two stream, you know, very soon uh, down the road. Um, that's certainly from the portable perspective. This device is nice and small. You can attach it to your laptop and go do the kind of portable analysis that you're used to. Uh, I mentioned about collecting from access points. Um, you know, that, that is something else. It's a, a new feature that we have added uh, in, in OmniPeak. So if we come up to um, capture, let's say, oops, let's just, sorry. Who, who do you expect to be first to market with a two-stream adapter? Raylink? Is that something that we can actually put in promiscuous mode? So I'm, I'm not sure which of the OEMs from Raylink will actually, you know, come to market with one. Could be Raylink first, though. It, but it, well, there's already there's already Realtek based ones and uh, Broadcom ones that, in the market today that can go in promiscuous. That are two stream, right? So for example, and I don't, I'm just pulling this up because I know it is an example. Not that it's, you know, it's just first in my mind, not first in any way. But um, you know, Edimax is an OEM that we actually get our Omni Wi-Fi from. Uh, they already have a two-stream Broadcom-based, or Realtek-based, sorry, Realtek-based um, 11AC adapter in the market. But the, the, those won't go into promiscuous mode today? The, we don't have a driver for them to right. go into promiscuous mode, right, right. right. Who, who do you expect to be first to market with a two-stream adapter that can go into promiscuous mode? Raylink. Raylink, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so, to, in terms of the uh, capturing directly from uh, access points and using remote PCAP, so if, what we, if we, we were to come in and, and through our um, aggregator area, so I'm now pretending that I'm going to start a new capture. Um, instead of capturing from my local machine, we'll go capture through what we call an aggregator or a roaming module. And by doing that, um, you can see down here we have a, a button for create our PCAP interfaces. So 
Um, let's say we want to go and connect to an access point that supports RPCAP. Um, it's really pretty straightforward. We just come up and put in the host IP, and I have one here. And if it has any authentication, we need to deal with that as well. It's not guest and guest. It's close. Um, there we go. So it finds the interfaces. We just say get interfaces. So basically, you know, what that's done, mainly through using standard stuff, is it has uh, gone out and uh, it's going to get these three interfaces and it's going to add them. And do too fast. Right, so it's going to add the wireless ones. If I go to the, you saw there were three. If I go over to the wired side, uh, you'll see there's one on the wired side. So there was one RPCAP uh, interface that was wired, two that were wireless. We kind of split them out. So now I've added these interfaces directly here, so I can use these just as if they were directly connected USB adapters to go uh, perform wireless captures uh, out there in the, in the network. This access point happens to be, you know, across the building. And it's very Simple from there, I just choose the ones that I want to choose and, uh, and then I can start a capture from there. Um, the channels, you can see we don't have an ability to set the channels here. That's because the channels still get set back on the controller side. So we'd have to go back to the controller to do that, but we can uh, click OK and then we will uh, actually start a new capture that's going to capture packets directly from, uh, from those particular uh, interfaces on that so access does point. does it only collect the data from the channel the AP is currently assigned to. That's correct. And, and in, this, in this example, uh, whose AP are you using? Do you know? Um, that one was the Aerohive. Aerohive AP, okay. Here you can see it. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the one other one that we have tested the, this with so far, uh, again, these are all more on, on the end side right now. We've also tested it with Ruckus. I can actually make a connection to a Ruckus one, too. It looks identical. I mean, it's the, the exact same kind of interface um, to go do that. So, um, I, you know, again, I know there's that debate about do you ever want to collect this way and should you collect this way? Uh, but there are certainly times when it's convenient for an analyst to, to maybe be able to go collect this way, uh, not be able to have to walk over. Um, and you can see, you know, again, in the band, now this is end traffic we're collecting, so we have the band as, as 802.11n and uh, et cetera. So, um, it would depend on what you're trying to actually troubleshoot, wouldn't it? I mean, if you're trying to troubleshoot why a client can't authenticate, this type of data might be useful to you, but yeah, if you're absolutely. trying to troubleshoot layer one, layer two problems, you'd probably more want to see those from the client point of view. That's absolutely true, right, and be next to the client. Uh, agreed. Agreed. I just had a little question on the last one. It looked like your signal strength was in the greater than 100%. <laughs> so you saw that, did you? Um, <laughs> I saw that earlier, too. Uh, but then I forgot, because I, I would have actually told you I'm not the kind of person to just gloss over it. But um, So th there is one thing. When we collect from, uh, from remote access points like that, everybody reports that stuff differently. When we're in control of a driver, it's easier, because we know for each vendor how they're reporting signal strength through our SSI values, and we can do the math to fix that. Um, you know, right now, when we're coming back on our PCAP, everything comes back in the same way to us. And if people are treating our SSI differently, we're applying a single algorithm across that, and the signal strengths are not coming across accurate. It's something that we need to work on Are you to carrying find that. just a straight DB value, though? Um, no, we, we usually do some work because everything we capture is, is the RSSI, so then we have to do work to create, to turn RSSI into either percentage or into DBM values uh, because RSSI doesn't really represent either one. You know, and it's the one thing about, you know, when you're using a protocol analyzer, ours or anybody else's, right, to do things like signal strength and other things, you know, I will be the first to tell you, please always take it with a grain of salt. I, I mean, really, for relative measurements, a protocol analysis, an analyzer maybe is a good way to do that. But you know, for true measurements, and this is not an RF analyzer, right? It's, it's not a spectrum analyzer. If you really want to measure signal strength, you should use a spectrum analyzer um, or a, a network analyzer, not a, not a network packets network analyzer, but a true RF network analyzer if you're looking to, to measure things like signal strength and spectrum because that's, that's not what this does, right? That we're, relying, we're already relying on a really inexpensive piece of hardware to do an RF measurement in something called RSSI, which is 
not dBm to begin with, and then we're doing math on that to get there. So um, relative measurements is, is all I would say. And I, like I said, that's not just true for us. That's true with any sort of solution like this. Um, so that's a remote capture. And we still, of course, uh, support our, our um, our other capture um, custom remote adapters as well, so I'll get it out. Uh, so Aruba and Cisco, and we also have uh, Maru supported uh, th that can be downloaded from MyPeak, so we can still do the same kind of thing directly from Aruba or, or Cisco with the, with the remote adapters, so um, haven't, haven't dropped that support, but added the RPCAT because we find that that's what uh, most of the vendors uh, are actually supporting today.